if you were in the Reichstag in 1945, you would be in a very dangerous place because World War II was coming to a grinding halt and even the Fuhrer himself was in a bunker. And we know that that building was a casualty of the war. And we are told that there is another Kehila and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And there was a hellish thing on the earth in World War II that did prevail on the government of Nazi Germany and the Reichstag. And right now people are looking for security in various places. But I'm telling you that if you are a millennial and you are going into a legalized marijuana shop to get yourself some pot or if you're going anywhere else except the house of God you have no assurance in the scriptures that it will not be destroyed because Petros his name means stone or a fragment of a rock was told the gates of Sheol, the gates of hell, the gates of Hades. And that means the machinations and the powers of the invisible world. Uh, the gates of, of, of a fortified city in ancient times were used to hold councils in. And they were places of great strength. And the world with its gates and the gates of, of destruction, the gates of Hades, they, those gates will not prevail against God's house. And his house will stand. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Today, there are people who say, I don't believe in an organized religion, and they steer clear of any house of God. But we need to remember that the Lord gave everything. He said, zeal for your house has consumed me. And when he talks about Petros, and he says, on this rock, he means on this confession, or uh, actually, hoda'ah is the word in Hebrew. If you make hoda'ah with your hey, your mouth, of Adonainu, and have imunah in your lev, in your heart, that Hashem raised the Zun Fundaroivishter from the Masim, from the dead. You will be saved. People believe that God is one. A man and his wife are Basar Echad. They're one flesh. But God, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Hashem Echad is one. The Kedusha HaMeshulesh, it means, yes, there are three, but they are one. There are two persons in a marriage. They are two, but they are one flesh. They are one. We cannot understand the mystery, 
but we have Deuteronomy 6, 4 and Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And I'm going to go with that. I'm going to believe that. That God raised the Zunpunder Oibister from the dead and gave, sent his Holy Spirit. It says in Isaiah chapter uh, 48, uh, actually it's uh, verse uh, 16. And it speaks of the Kedusha Hameshuleshet. And what does it say? It says, Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken Maseter in secret, Marosh, from the first. From the time that it takes place, there am I, and now Adonai Hashem and his Ruach hath sent me. So here you have Adonai Hashem, you have the Ruach, and you have the Moshiach, the Evan Hashem, Isaiah 42, 1. Uh, and this is Hashem's Kedusha HaMeshuleshet. And it's found in Isaiah 48, verse 16. Now, on this confession, this Kehilah is built, and the gates of Hades will not prevail, they will not triumph over it. The Hoda'a, the confession, my mother gave up everything she had. She sold everything, got rid of everything, got in a car with nothing, nothing, and went to Beverly Hills and then began looking for a good Kehila where the Bible was believed and faithfully preached. And then she dragged me there. Then I became a believer. Then we went forward and we confessed with our mouth in front of the congregation. The Hoda'a of Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And I was delivered from my old life and given a new life, immediately put in school and mentored by teachers and by uh, other leaders. And I was put in a safe place. I was a newborn sheep put in a sheep fold. And that's where the Bible is believed and faithfully taught. And that's what is uh, under attack in this world today and even in new york and even in the united states where thousands of buildings are being sold thousands of congregations are closing thousands of empty places that once had large crowds and great preaching now the pews are empty the people are old the new generation is not interested, and they can they cannot sustain it. They say, so the realtors come in and offer them all this money, and the next thing you know, it's being torn down, and a motel or some other place is being built in in its place. And this is the great shock and the great trauma of our ministry because we know the joyful sound of Glad Tidings Tabernacle, which is now a Mormon hotel. And we are very uh, sad about it. And we are determined that this will not happen to Beth Shalom. And so we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. We're trying to reach all kinds of different people, Muslims, Hasidim, Hasidic Jews, Orthodox Jews, religious Jews, ultra-Orthodox Jews, ordinary people, Spanish people, uh, people of all 
uh, ethnic backgrounds. We are uh, also uh, publishing the Bible and, and uh, we're going on YouTube and we're ex extending the uh, uh, reach of the pulpit. Uh, soon we will have a thousand subscribers to our YouTube channel, hopefully. We're doing everything we can because we know how important the Kehila is. What would have happened to me if my mother had made that tremendous sacrifice, gotten herself to Beverly Hills and all the congregations in Beverly Hills or in Los Angeles, what if all of them had been sold, all the buildings were lost and sold and the congregations dried up and she couldn't find a place to take me. What, what would have happened to me? Wherever two or three are gathered in his name, there he is. And that where he is, where the word of God is taught, where the word of God is preached, there is power. There was a man named Calvin who went to a, a city called Geneva. He preached every single day for decades and there was a transformation in that city that affected the whole world even though it was a small town only about 12,000 people or so at that time and uh, he also wrote the institutes and he used publishing and translation of the Bible and of his uh, writings to further the gospel. He did a great deal in a very short amount of time. He shows what one person can do in a lifetime. And what Kepa is being told in this uh, scripture is you are Petros. You are a rock, and I'm going to build my house on a rock. I'm going to build the house of God, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, I'm praying right now that all over America, people will be glad that they have freedom of religion and freedom of assembly and freedom of speech and they have the freedom to go to a house of God. And that they will not just walk by that, that, that place that's near their home and not even go in and see if the Bible is believed and faithfully taught. And if the uh, believers are uh, really uh, preaching the word and welcoming outsiders to taste and see that the Lord is good and bring their doctrine into conformity with the scriptures, that people will suddenly see the pearl of great price. Uh, hallelujah. I thank God for that congregation in Westwood Hills in California, where I wept and went forward and made the good confession and turned my life over to the Lord and then met with the pastor, and then he picked up the phone and called Donald McGavern, and then I was in the seminary, and the thing, next thing you know, I'm preaching on the street and writing everything you need to grow a Messianic synagogue and seeing all these Jews come to salvation and then go to Florida and do the same thing and then come up to New York. Oh, hallelujah, what a glorious thing. And I thank God for my life. I wouldn't trade my life with anybody. And I thank God for what happened in that congregation. A revolution took place in that Westwood congregation where the Lord brought me using my mother as the evangelist, the Mavaser, the Mavaseret, I should say, a lady evangelist, the Mavaseret. Yes, she prayed for me for 28 years. She did not stop praying. Then she didn't just pray. She put shoe leather to her prayers. She 
uh, sold everything and got in the car and drove to Los Angeles. For all she knew, she was going to be homeless. The Lord immediately took care of her and immediately her needs were met. She had a place to live and a salary and everything. And then she was free to start looking for a congregation. It says the Lord directs the steps of a righteous person. The Lord directed her steps immediately to the right congregation. And then she she dragged me there. I was not really wanting to go. I was lost. I was in the dark. I was not ready for the Lord, but he was ready for me. And he was not going to leave me in my condition. He had a plan for my life. He was going to make me a new creature. He was going to give me a ministry. He was going to give me teachers and leaders and shepherds and pastors and people that could help me, who could exhort me or even rebuke me if necessary, who could uh, 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 meet with me and uh, deal with me and help me to get my doctrine straight and to get my life straightened out. And I thank God for the Kehila, for the congregation. And I thank God that Jewish people now have Messianic synagogues and that people are finding the Lord and they're they're turning to the Lord. And and that at the, and and back in Acts chapter 21, that that congregation was a messianic synagogue. And I thank God for that. And, and today I have a great burden for America to rediscover the house of the Lord. How could you possibly go into a uh, a legalized marijuana shop and buy drugs knowing that marijuana is a gateway drug when the world is on the verge of a nuclear World War III and that NATO is basically already at war with Russia using a proxy and Russia probably will not let this just go on and on and on as a kind of ruse, but there will be an attack on NATO sooner or later. When that happens, there will be World War III. So it's it's right here. And the congregation should be filled with people praying and crying out to God. This is not a time to legalize drugs and live in a fantasy world, uh, a sort of a smoke-filled opium den drug palace. No, this is not the time for that. And I want to pray for the millennials and Generation Z that they will come back to the Lord. And I want to thank you, Lord, for all the revivals that have taken place down through the centuries and for the Great Awakening and the Second Great Awakening and all these other uh, revivals. And I want to thank you, Lord, that there's still hope for America and there's still hope for New York. And I want to thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing to, to fill people with the Holy Spirit and get them to the prayer meeting, get them on their face, crying out to God. And I thank you for this technology. And I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. And I ask you, Lord, to use us. Hallelujah that the gates of hell will not prevail against bethshalom.nyc. Bethshalom.nyc, the gates of hell will not prevail against her. And we thank you for the yiddishbible.net. And we thank you for the newcreations.app. And we thank you, Lord, for the afri.org and the uh, ministry that is there and we thank you for the artists for israel youtube channel and we thank you for all the books on the bio page all the digital library there and we thank you for the united bible society and we thank you that in ukraine even in the midst of the terrible war there is something called the Uni the ukrainian bible society where Bibles are going out and where people are praying and where the light is still flickering in a dark place. And I thank you, Lord, Amen. 
for the Artists for Israel Bible Society here in New York. And oh God, may it always go on and may Beth Shalom always go on. And may from the ashes of that great historic Pentecostal congregation, Glad Tidings Tabernacle, from the ashes of that place where Linda and I attended, where James and Wayne attended, from the ashes of that place, Lord, may there be a congregation named Beth Shalom that the gates of hell will, will not prevail over, that the machinations of the devil will not have victory over. By the blood of the Lamb, we pray this. And everybody 